Hello everyone, finally I got the Eureka handset for the review, so let's play God. I'm Gogi from Gogi.in and you're watching the review of 64-bit octaco powered smartphone called the Eureka and it's running Cyanogen OS out of the box. The SAR values are clearly mentioned on the box. It is imported and manufactured by UV Televentures Private Limited. It's powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 1.5GHz octa-core 64-bit processor with Adreno 405 GPU. Screen size is 5.5 inches with HD resolution. It's with Gorilla Glass 3 protection. There is 2GB RAM, 16GB internal storage, 13 megapixel rear camera, 5 megapixel front camera. 4G is supported and removable battery is of 2500mAh capacity. Inside the box, you'll find this handset, the Eureka. Battery of 2500mAh capacity. Good quality earphone, this is the call button and the mic and a closer look at the earplug. Data cable, travel charger and I guess you'll also get a user manual and warranty card. For some reason it is missing on this review unit. Here is the handset, the Eureka with a nice looking menu button. Build quality and the finishing looks really good. Handset is curvy, no sharp edges, lightweight and pretty attractive. The rear side has got this nice texture that gives a very elegant look to the handset. The back cover is slightly curved and covers up almost 80% of the handset. On the rear side you'll find this speaker out vent. The back side is flat and when you place this handset on a flat surface it's going to cover up the speaker vents thereby reducing the sound output. YU logo on the back, 13 megapixel rear autofocus camera, LED flash and the mic. There are dual mics for noise cancellation. This is the first mic at the bottom and the other mic on the back side. 3.5mm audio jack is placed on the top, power button on the right side, volume rockers on the left, micro USB port and the mic at the bottom. Here are the three touch sensitive buttons on the front bottom. On the top you'll find the in-call speaker, front camera, sensors and LED notification light. This is a dual SIM handset with dual standby mode. There are two micro SIM slots, SIM slot 1. And next to it is the micro SD card slot. This is SIM slot 2. This handset supports 4G. The weight with battery is 151 grams. It is 8.25 mm thick. The breadth is 78.16 mm and the length is 154.90 mm. Let's power on. It's running Cyanogen OS out of the box. That's based on Android 4.4.4. Touch is very smooth and responsive. Native video calling is not supported and this is how the phone dialer looks. The touch sensitive navigation buttons, they do light up. Handset comes loaded with audio FX application with equalizer presets. There is built in FM radio. And here is the quick settings option. It's customized. There is built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and GPS. The GPS log is pretty fast. 4G is supported but I don't have 4G services at my location. Cyanogen is highly customizable. You can customize the lock screen, status bar. There is LED notification. You can enable battery light. Off-screen gestures are supported. You can double tap the status bar to switch off the screen and double tap anywhere on the screen to switch it on. You can also customize the buttons. The handset comes with 16 gigs of internal storage and you get around 13 gigs for apps. And of the 2 gigs of RAM, you'll get around 1.3 GB free. Hindi language is supported. Color reproduction is very good and the viewing angles are also pretty good. This is a 5.5 inch screen with 720p resolution. I am downloading the Asphalt 8 game and as you can see it's being downloaded. This game is getting installed on the internal storage. I'm going to Android's OBB and uh, as you can see the game is getting downloaded in this folder in the internal storage. I just got a notification and you can see the LED blinking. OTG is supported. I can access the content of my pen drive. When the pen drive is connected, you'll find that the LED is glowing all the time, as you can see. And when you remove the pen drive, it goes off. Plug it back and it's on. You can view the notification on the lock screen itself. 
There is a 13 megapixel rear autofocus camera and a 5 megapixel front camera. Let's check out the camera application. The rear camera is autofocus. Now this is set to the auto mode by default. If you want to change the mode, just swipe it down from top to bottom. You can visit my website to check the sample images I've shot using this handset. Let's check out the settings option. The camera picture size is 13.1 megapixel. That's for the rear camera in 4 is to 3 aspect ratio. In 16 is to 9 aspect ratio, it can shoot in just 2.1 megapixel resolution. That's too low. I have set the picture quality to 90%. Other features are zero shutter delay, face detection. A rear camera can shoot full HD videos at 30 FPS. And if you set the video size to 720p, it can shoot slow motion videos at 60 FPS. And here is the video codec options. I shot a video and it got recorded in 100p resolution at 30 FPS. Let's check out the system information. It's uh, using the Qualcomm Snapdragon MSM8939 chipset. 1.5 GHz octa-core 64-bit with uh, Adreno 405 GPU. And it's running Cyanogen based on Android 4.4.4. There are four sensors, accelerometer, light, proximity and gyro. The time is 12.02, battery at 85% and the temperature at 33 degrees. Quadrant benchmark score is 18194. Antutu score is 31428. The second time it was 30517. Vilamo, metal. 947 multi core 1169 browser 2318 Nina Mark 2 55.0 FPS and this handset supports 5 point multi touch. After 24 minutes, the battery dropped by 9% and the temperature is 38 degrees. The handset does get a bit hot, especially in this area near the camera module. You will not feel the heat up below this logo, only on the top portion, and especially when you're using the handset for a longer time. I've set the brightness to the maximum, Wi-Fi is on and I'm going to play this video in a loop. After 16 minutes, the battery dropped by 5% and the temperature is 35 degrees. Let's play games, Asphalt 8. As already mentioned, this game got installed on the internal storage. I'm going to set it to the highest visual quality. I did not find any issue with this game, it was playable. After 15 minutes, the battery dropped by 6% and the temperature is 38 degrees. You don't really need a screen guard. The screen is scratch resistant. It's with Gorilla Glass 3 protection. Let's check out the sound loudness. This is the music playing on the Eureka handset in full volume. And now the same music on the Galaxy Note Edge in full volume. The audio output on Eureka is average, it's not very high or very low. This handset supports 4G and is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 64-bit octa-core processor. It's running Cyanogen OS which is very popular worldwide. The performance is pretty good and lag-free. Camera quality is average, you can visit my website to check sample images and as far as the battery is concerned, you can expect about 4-5 to five hours of continuous moderate to heavy usage. For a price tag of Rs. 8,999, you definitely can play God.